decorated it and this upcoming tutorial is going to show you how I go about decorating these bowls from the underglazes, the tools that I use and how to apply it. So stay tuned, enjoy and I'll see you soon. First of all, I'm going to go over the tools that you will need to do these bowls. You will need some really good paint brushes. And when I mean good paint brushes, I mean usually a good talcum paint brush or even better still, a sable paint brush. My favorite go-to paint brush is this one. It's called a coach, coach paint brush. It's used by sign writers and it's really wide here. Oops, <laughs> it's really wide here. So it holds a lot of paint and it tapers to a very thin edge, which means I can get lots and lots of fine lines. Also, I don't have to reload it very often. It's also called a, uh, it's a, so this is called a dagger paintbrush, a coach paintbrush, or a fine line paintbrush. So that's one of the paintbrushes. This is my favorite. I've had it for the past 40 years and I love it. If you don't have one of those, these are some other paint brushes that you can purchase. They are very, very long. So if you can see that's at least um, one finger, it's uh, nearly two inches long. They also work reasonably well. They hold a little bit, uh, they hold a reasonable amount of paint, but you might have to reload if you're going around and doing a fine rim. The other paintbrush that I like using this is one of my sable paintbrushes. It holds a lot of paint. When you use it, it comes to a nice little point. So it's quite wide through the middle and then it tapers to a nice point. So it means that I can get fine lines and when I press hard, I get wide lines. The, if you don't have any of those to fill in, you can get one of these. These are a goat hair paintbrush. They fill in the spaces really, really quickly. So if you've got really good lines to start with, you can use one of these to fill in. So that's it for the paintbrushes. This is an underglaze paint. An underglaze means I can get clear, precise lines. If I use a glaze, it's going to melt. So wherever I put an underglaze, that is exactly what you are going to see. So the underglaze that I'm using today is a Clayworks underglaze. That is the scarlet red that I'm using. The reason I'm using it, it's local, it's easy to get. And for me, it's um, I need if I need something quickly, or if I run out, it's nice to know I can get it uh, very, very quickly. They're a Duncan brand. Uh, Duncan is a really good brand and I've used the Red Wagon for a really nice bright red, but that is difficult to get here in Australia. So any brand that that you are happy with, that's a good brand. The other thing that I'm going to use is a Chrysanthos Black. The reason I'm using Chrysanthos Black is that I've got a lot of it here in my studio. I used it for my students. It, Chrysanthos is a Chinese brand and it's um, sold by a pug mill here in South Australia. So it's a very inexpensive color to purchase and that's why I like using it. When we're working, <laughs> when we're working with underglazes, underglazes are actually not shiny, they're a flat color. So this is an underglaze without any sheen over it. It is a flat finish compared to this. So you can see how that bowl is a shiny finish. So the underglaze will look like this. And then I have to put a clear glaze over so it goes shiny. With working with underglaze, especially black, I find that sometimes when I put a glaze over it, the glaze goes a little bit milky. So to avoid that, what I do is I put a little bit of flux into my underglaze. And a flux is a little bit of glaze. It's to make the underglaze a little bit smoother so it won't detract 
the glaze when I put it on and when it's fired, but it will melt into the glaze really nicely. So it's a bond. Now, the clear glaze that I'm going to put in, so roughly it's around about, and this is just a, um, it's not a, a, a strict guideline. So for each teaspoon that I put in of under glaze, I put around about an eighth of a teaspoon, just a little bit of glaze. So this is a clear glaze that I've mixed up. That's my Clayworks glaze that I use for this particular work. Or in the past, I've actually used the Chrysanthos clear glaze and that's my brush on glaze that I also have put in. So I pre-mix, this has all been pre-mixed. So it actually has the clear glaze in it already. So I'm ready to go. Setting up, I like to have two buckets of water. So I've actually got two buckets of water. The first bucket is to give my first rinse. And notice I squeeze my paintbrush so I don't flick because if I flick, I'm going to dirty my work that's on my table here. The next bucket is just to rinse it out. So this bucket gets really dirty, but this bucket stays reasonably clear. And that's really good for when you're painting. It means you don't have to keep cleaning out or rinsing out your paint um, water for your paint brushes and it stays cleaner for longer. We are about ready to go. The other thing that I use when I'm doing this technique, which is a scraffito. So all of these leaves have been painted black and then I scratch back. The tool that I use for that is one of these. It's like a pin and I love it because it actually fits in my hand really, really nicely so I can work with it just like a pencil. So I find that really easy to use. This is another one um, that I got in a kit. It's got another handle there and that handle also is really nice. It, As I said, it's like um, having a pencil in your hand and it's really easy to use. I find these work really, really well. So I'm just using a pin tool to do the decoration. When you're mixing up your underglaze, this is my paint palette. <laughs> it's just an ice cream lid. Um, you can use anything. I just found this really easy. I give it out to all my students. I find it easy to work with. And I've got the black underglaze here and I've got the red underglaze here. I actually haven't cleaned it off because underglaze, I can re-wet this if I want to rework it. So that's not an issue. I don't have to clean it all the time. Now, whenever you use your underglaze, you need to shake it. Now, if you have a look, I don't know if you can see this, but I've only got a lot of liquid on the bottom and the rest of the paint. Can you see that? That's sitting there. So what happens is the colour settles. So the sediment from the colour actually drops down. So you really need to shake your containers very, very well. Some people forget and they end up getting a lot of liquid, not actually colour. So make sure you pack, <laughs> shake your bottles really well. What I do have is I have little squeezy bottles. These are really handy to use. They just nicely fit in my hand. So that means I don't have to worry about the bigger bottle. I siphon them into my smaller bottles. So what I do is I shake and then I pour it out. So I don't pour a lot. It's just a little bit. It's roughly around about a 20 cent coin. Um, that gives you an idea of my thumb against it. So it's not really, really a lot of paint. I do use a lot of black. So the black I use a lot more of. Again, I use a smaller bottle. It comes, I buy it in a 500 ml, which is roughly about a pint. I put it into these smaller bottles. It makes it a lot easier for me to handle. And also it means I'm not shaking huge quantities. So this is where I shake. Remember, I've also put the clear glaze into this, so it's ready to go. And I'm just going to squeeze it out. Now, this is quite runny or ready. Um, it's got quite a bit of movement, but I'm going to talk about that as well. See, I've already got dirt on my hands. Now, when you're working with underglazes, make sure your surface area is really clean. If you are dirty, what's going to happen is that your pots are going to be dirty. And I'm working with a very white 
clay and I want this absolutely pristine so any contamination that I get it's like working in your kitchen any contamination and black goes everywhere so it black is really really hard to get off so make sure your areas are really really clean As I said, I've got this um, poured out. I'm ready to go. And I'll show you how I set up my paintbrush. So that is my paintbrush. The other thing too is that all of these bowls that I'm going to be using, they're greenware. So I've thrown them. I've allowed them to dry. How long do they take to dry? It depends how warm your studio is. I always say to people, um, think of a towel, you've got a towel, you've washed it, you put it on the line. If it's really cold outside, that towel is not going to dry. But if it's a very hot day, the towel will dry quickly. So um, for these bowls at the moment, they take around about two to three days to dry. I don't like to dry them out too quickly because sometimes you can get cracking and warping. So if you slow down the drying, you get better results. So these are greenware. Now with greenware, if you can see, I'm handling them quite gently. Never hold from one side, always hold it with two hands, nice and gentle when you put it down. Greenware is exactly like chalk, sticks of chalk. If you knock it or bump it, there is a chance that even if you don't see any crack lines, there could be a minute fracture inside and we call that a hairline fracture it's a little bit like an athlete they have hairline fractures in their bones but they actually don't see the fractures until they start running and you won't see those fractures in your pot or in your clay until you fire it and that's when the fractures and the stress marks come out so always be careful now the other thing that I have here is a banding wheel. So a banding wheel is, this is a really heavy one. It's a Shimpo banding wheel. The beauty of this, it's not electronic, which you can use your pottery wheel and make it go round. But this is just by hand. And when I turn this, it keeps going for quite a while. The cheaper brands are also good, but they don't spin around for as long. So as you can see, this is still going. It's got a really good ball bearing and it's going to go around for a little bit longer. And as I'm talking, it's still going. Now, when I'm putting on my colors here, what I'm trying to do is I've got to get this called centered. Now, if this is, see how that's wobbling when I turn it around? That's not going to give me straight lines when I'm banding. I'm going to be banding color on. So what I need to do is where it hits my hand, that's where it's hitting my hand. I've got to push it over to see, and it's still bang, bang, it's hitting my hand. That's where it's too close and that's where it's too far away. So I'm just going to push that over And still just tapping here and I can push that over. Now on these Shimpo wheels, they have lines. So those lines are really, really helpful to try and get it centered anyway. So that's pretty well centered. Now I'm going to use my dagger brush, my cutting brush here. And I'm going to just dip it in a little bit of water to make sure that it's not overly dry because if it's really dry, what's going to happen is that the color is just going to suck up very quickly. But I'm just moving that around. So what's going to happen, and this is what I love about this brush, it's holding that paint. And you can see the dribble coming down. Oh, there we go. And there'll be another dribble coming down but it's holding onto a lot of paint. So the other thing is that I watered it down slightly because when I put it onto the clay, the clay actually sucks it up really, really quickly. So I've just made the paint a little bit more fluid to brush it on. Now, sometimes the underglazes come out really, really thick in the jar. If they're too thick, 
um, that means that they're not going to flow as well. So a little bit of water can often be very, very handy. If you add too much water, you're going to get a finish that is translucent and you're not going to get a really good solid block of color. So now I've loaded that up, I'm going to step, put my elbow onto the table. I'm going to turn this wheel and I'm just going to touch and you can see I get a lovely band of color. Really, really, really easy. So I'll show you how that's done again. <laughs> so load up the paintbrush, make sure it's nice and fluid. And you can see there's paint on there. Turn it around, hold, touch, and then the paint transfers and I'm holding my hand really steady. So that's how I band and that's the beauty of banding with this paintbrush. You can see that I don't have to reload all the time. Let's try it with this other paintbrush. This is the other paintbrush that I have. I'm just going to wet this, make sure it's nice and fluid load up that paintbrush i'm mixing that up there let's have a look and see how this one goes you can see it's not holding the paint as well it's still holding it but not as well let's have a go hold it steady and that is also a nice paintbrush i've got a bit of a thick line here let's have another try at this again see if we can get a just making sure I don't have too much lighter. There we go. And that's another good line. So this paintbrush works really well. This is another brand of paintbrush. Let's have a look at this one. And hold your hand steady. And it goes around and that works also so we've got some nice bands of even lines going through it does as you can see it takes a little bit of practice to band to learn how to band your pots so practice on this is one of my test pieces practice on a test piece until you feel confident and then you can have a go on your pieces that you really want to do this on I think I'm ready to go. <laughs> now, the other tool that I have used, as I said, is this Scraffito tool. I scratch back with it. I can scratch back on my greenware. That is the wear that I have thrown, but I have not fired. All I've done, I've thrown it, I've let it dry, and then I've painted it. So when I scratch back, it will actually scratch into the clay and it means that I will scratch the black underglaze off and I will get the white clay coming through underneath, which is really cool. Now that you've seen all the tools that I use in the video, you can have a really good look, look through it. A lot of it is fast forward so that it makes it a little bit quicker to watch because what you really needed to know was some of the techniques I've used. So I've shown you all those techniques. Now you can have a look at the video and see how it all comes together. The glazed, the underglaze, and away we go. Enjoy, thanks for watching.
liked what you saw today, could you please hit that like button? Remember to subscribe and ring that bell because I have lots of ideas coming up and we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. I'm Cheryl Hanwoodlock from Handmade Studio saying goodbye for now and enjoy your creative journey.